Hello and welcome to the shop. The video that you're about to see doesn't have a very happy ending. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about that up front. But I made this blank a while back and I call it a pinwheel blank. And it's basically 12 triangles that are glued together. And for this one, I stuck a, you can see it's got a colored pencil in the middle. And I didn't make a video on this one. This was just a bunch of cutoffs I had laying around and I put it together and it worked. The issue is I kind of drilled off center so it doesn't, it's, it's kind of cattywampus. I went and said, well, let's make a video and let's do one of these for real. So I made one out of maple and walnut. And when I went to turn it, I was using carbide and I am a, a traditional high speed tool user, but I've been trying to learn a little bit about carbide because I get a lot of questions about it. And I know what I did as I was turning, carbide, you go straight in. High speed steel, you're kind of dropping the back end of the tool and angling the front end. And I know what I did. I was cutting and I dropped the back end of that tool and boom, I blew that blank apart. And I had the video all done, all the upfront build, the cutting, the every, gluing and everything, all the way to that point. I was like, oh, I just lost it. Okay, I'm going to do another one. So I started over from scratch. The video and everything, I did another complete video, added more to it, you know, how, how to cut it, how to sand it, how to glue it up, the whole entire process. Put it together, I get over to the lathe, I decide this time to use standard high-speed steel. I sharpen my tools up. I'm being very, very careful. I even talk about that in the video. I don't know what I did. I used epoxy to put this thing on the tube, but whenever I caught, I literally stripped two-thirds of the blank off the tube. That was the second attempt. I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna do another attempt. I do believe that the process I show you is good, and I know it'll work because I've done it once. If you follow these steps, and you can probably improve on them, you'll be able to make this blank. I think the issue is, it wasn't necessarily that I dropped the tail into the tool, and it wasn't necessarily that I got a bad catch, as much as I think, well, well, that's what caused it was a catch both times, but I think the issue is, when you take these 12 segments, you are presenting the grain at literally 12 different angles every time that thing comes around. Not to mention you've got a dowel through the middle. In this case, it was a Paduk dowel, which is in grain. And all of that together, I think, was a perfect storm for a catch. Um, so I think the trick is um, to work out the proper tool to use, which was probably a skew. I should have probably been using a skew chisel. I definitely think this is a 100% uh, blank that you can make. I just need to move on. I haven't had a lot of shop time and I don't want to start over and do another one of these because they are time consuming. I've got a few other projects going on that I would rather present to you. So I'm going to show this video in its entirety. So no upfront, it's not going to end well. Um, so if you don't want to waste your time, I understand, please, you know, feel free to move on to another video. In the future, I probably will come back and probably attempt this again uh, when I have a little more time, but I really feel like I need to give you guys some other content. So I'm going to show what I have and I'm gonna move on to some of the other projects. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and close this video now by saying thank you for joining me in the shop. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. And uh, if you stick around, I hope you enjoy the content that I'm about to present to you. For this blank, I chose two contrasting woods, maple and walnut. And you'll also notice that the blanks are roughly the same dimension. Now, they don't have to be, but it just makes things a little easier. We're going to be using our segmenting sled that we made in a previous video. I'll put a link to this video uh, in the comment section. I've set up a stop block, roughly one half of an inch on the outside of the blade, and we're going to cut 12 blanks, roughly a half inch in length each, six maple, six walnut. Using the same sled, I clamped it to my disc sander. We're gonna square up one side of each of these 12 segments. I took an oak blank and I set this sled to 30 degrees. I cut it off on the bandsaw. I brought it over to my belt sander and I cleaned up the edge so it's nice and smooth. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clamp this to the backstop of my sled 
and we're going to use it to form our triangular pieces that will make up the pinwheel blank. With my angled blank mounted to my backstop, I went ahead and put a registration mark on top of it one sixteenth of an inch less than three quarters of an inch. Now it took quite a bit of trial and error for me to come to that dimension, but what that does is give me a nice sized pinwheel with the smallest possible hole in the center. You don't want the hole to be too big because the larger the hole is, the more space it takes up on the tube and the less of the pinwheel effect you're gonna see. We'll now take the blanks that we have flattened on one side and we'll put that flattened edge against the slant on our blank and we'll sand these into a triangle, pushing them in until they're even with the registration mark. This might be a better angle. You can see my registration mark right there. And with a ruler, you can see that it is 1 16th of an inch less than 3 quarters of an inch. Here's the flat side of my blank. We're going to go ahead and run a couple of these through and let you see just how this process works. Once all of our segments have been sanded into triangles, we can arrange them by alternating the woods. We'll put some glue on them and we'll clamp them with a simple hose clamp from the big box store. With the blank glued up, we'll just set it aside to dry. Now, I like to use a piece of tempered glass for glue up. This works great for tight bond. It also works great for CA because once this glue dries, I can take a razor blade, scrape it right off the surface, and any of the glue that squeezes out of my blank, even though it will get on the surface, this will not stick to the tempered glass. With the glue dry, the next step is to get the blank down to a standard size. So I brought a three quarter by three quarter blank over and we're just gonna basically line it up, try to square it off as much as possible and mark our blank. With that marked, we can lay the blank on the opposite side and mark it all the way through. Now we'll head over to the bandsaw and we'll cut the sides off of our blank. I need to square up both ends of this blank and for that we're just going to use our segmenting sled on our disc sander. I need to drill a clean hole right down the center of my blank. I probably should have done this before cutting the sides off, but unfortunately I got out of sequence. I'm going to try to use this clamp to hold it. That way my fingers aren't near the blade. Uh, this hole is a little smaller than 1330 seconds. So I've chucked up a 1330 seconds bit and we're just going to try to take our time and make a nice clean hole all the way through the blank. I'm really happy with that. I'm ready to turn the center for my pinwheel blank. I chucked up a really nice piece of paduke. This is the drill bit I used to drill the center out of that blank. And with my calipers, I got a nice measurement. So I'm ready now to turn this down into a dowel, 0.405 millimeters in diameter, and we'll get that glued into the center of our blank.
I've got my dowel turned down to the perfect dimension. Let's go ahead and get it parted off of the blank. While the glue dries on my dowel, let's go ahead and take the rest of that Paduke blank and let's cut a couple of end caps so that we can make this fit a Sierra tube. Back over to the disc sander and the segmenting sled, let's go ahead and square up one end of each of these blanks. The Paduke blank is quite a bit smaller than the blank we're making. It shouldn't cause a whole lot of a problem as long as we take that blank and we center it on each end of our blank. We'll give that a little bit of time to dry, and then we should be able to tube it. This is the part that I consider to be the most difficult in making this blank, and that is drilling down straight through the center of the blank. And you can see I've drawn a line on there. And if I lower the blade next to that line, you can see that it appears to go evenly all the way down the line. So I'm hoping, it took quite a bit of adjusting in the vise to get it straight. I'm hoping I have this lined up perfectly straight. I then took that line and followed it across the top of the blank and found the center and we're ready to go ahead and drill. So we're just gonna take our time, we're gonna drill really slow and we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that we hit center blank. Sorry about how dark that is. Oh shoot, looks like we blew out the end of the blank. Let me turn this around where you can see a little better. Darn it, I heard a little pop and it looks like we blew out the end of the blank. This is not a huge deal. Uh, let me go ahead and verify that we did go down the center of the blank. And if we did, we can just basically cut this off with the bandsaw. We'll square it up on the sander and we'll put a new piece on there, let it dry, and we'll just run the drill right back down through the center of the blank and drill that bottom piece off. Luckily, we lost the Paduke and not, not the pinwheel blank. Very easy fix. I've grabbed a tube and popped it into the blank. And if you follow the tube, it looks like we did a pretty darn good job going right down the center of the blank. So I'm super happy about that. We're going to go ahead and cut this off, and then we'll run it through the sander, square it up. I'll cut another piece on the bandsaw. We'll get it glued up, and uh, once it dries, we'll just punch that hole uh, right back through it. I cleaned up the end of the blank, and I went ahead and glued another piece of Paduke onto it. What we're going to do now is very carefully line this blank back up, make sure we have no binding of the bit uh, inside of the existing hole. We want it to go nice and smooth right down in there so we get a clean cut. We don't want to take any more material away. And we're just going to gingerly cut our way through the bottom of this blank. I'll be a son of a gun. Would you look at that? Second time around. I'm having a heck of a time with this Paduke blank, but luckily it's not affecting uh, the pinwheel blank. I'm a little disappointed in that. We're going to try one more time 
And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll measure and try to go with a shorter piece of paduk. Maybe, maybe this piece is a little too long. Uh, it could also be, notice how close I am to the sides. Uh, I just didn't have enough meat there and the blank gave way. So I'll try to, you know, even if I have to offset the blank a little bit, I'll try to square that up. So let me get back over to the uh, bandsaw. We'll cut this off and then we will uh, get another piece cut and glued to this blank. The glue has had plenty of time to dry on the piece that we added to the blank. Uh, the process was very simple. I went to the bandsaw. I cut it off very close to the pinwheel section of the blank. Then I took it to my disc sander and I squared the blank up, cut another piece, and simply glued it on. So we're ready to go ahead and attempt to drill. I've taken great pains to line the drill bit up so that it's gonna go straight through the blank and not wallow out and enlarge our existing hole. There's our entry hole and there's our exit hole. And as you can see, it is not split. We've got a nice looking blank we're going to take this over to the glue up table and I'm not going to show this part, but I'm going to go ahead and get a tube glued into the blank. I will be using a Loctite two part epoxy to do that. And when the blank is dry, you will see it again, uh, ready to turn. The last time you saw this blank, I had just finished drilling out the bottom section of Paduke, uh, which split on me twice earlier. So that looks good. I took this to the sander and uh, squared up both ends, and then I just knocked the corners off because I really want to be careful with this blank since I had so much trouble drilling. Uh, it's not perfectly round or anything at this point, uh, but it will be a little easier for me to go ahead and uh, start to true up, and that's what we're going to do now. Blank is starting to true up nicely. Really looks good. Just gonna keep taking our time. We're not quite deep enough down to uh, the dowel there, but that's okay because we've got plenty of room left to turn away. I just want to take it nice and slow. There's no sense in getting in a hurry on this one. Well, this blank just wasn't meant to be. This is the third one I've made. The first one turned out okay. It was made out of a softer wood. Uh, the spectra ply is really easy to turn. The uh, walnut, and I'm thinking this might be like an ash or something. It, I guess just turning against the grain from all the different grain directions is making it difficult, and I got a catch. This is the second one I've blown up. Uh, I think for now, I'm gonna retire this blank. I may come back to it at a later date and attempt it again, but here's my challenge. Those of you out there who enjoy making custom blanks, I'd like to see some of you guys uh, take my method, maybe improve on it, put together one of these blanks and get it turned and shoot me a photo. I would love to see it, absolutely love to see it. But for me, I think I'm finished.